Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. Today on the show, I meet an artist who, he's a graphic designer. He also uh, went into painting, and then after going into painting, decided to learn 3D modeling and create his own robot toys based on the artwork that he does. He likes to draw robots. He's really into sci-fi kind of art, and he created robots. He successfully funded a Kickstarter campaign to create a six inch robot that he had done with, uh, had a person produce and then decided to buy a printer and create more. And he started what he calls a robot of the month club where you can sign up and get a new tiny robot that he designs every month. I almost said every week, but it's every month. Every week would be nuts. Uh, but so Craig Snodgrass is the person's name. And we talk about how he got into all this, how he decided to switch from one medium to another, and what his plans are going forward with making these robots, how he promotes it, how he's going to scale it. Super interesting conversation. Uh, it, it was great meeting him. So here is my interview with Craig Snodgrass starting right now. First of all, where am I talking to you from? I am located in a small town in Virginia, Stanton, Virginia, I guess is where we're at. I guess that's okay. I don't know. I'm always paranoid about um, my exact location. but <laughs> Well, here's, here's the funny thing. When I search for you on Google, you actually show up as a place in Virginia. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> you must have done like a gallery show or something, and you must have connected it to your... Um, website or something because it At actually one point, yeah so like I, I know like I've used like Google business before yes and um, I've tried to remove my actual physical address from that but there's no physical seems... address it's it's it basically says... the entire town is surrounded like that is where you are located <laughs> so, so I saw that and that's and I was like does he actually have like a gallery or a store or something so I wasn't well, sure yeah I mean me, uh, me and a few colleague, colleagues did have a gallery at one point. Oh, um, okay. Downtown, yeah. It was like a, our own personal gallery workshop. Um, that was like five years ago, I want to say. It's, you know, we had it for like a couple of years, but, you know, artists being artists, um, you know, people had to move and go and pursue different things. So yeah. um, we just decided to shut it down at the time. But no, it was a fun experience. <clears throat> what did you do with this at this gallery? So um, there was four of us, and we called ourselves, or we called the gallery the uh, Dwell Collective. Um, that's D W E L L. Okay. Um, might be able to, might have a website of sports still. I'm not sure if you want some more information, but um, there was four of us, and we all had our different um, creative paths there. You know, either painting or illustration, um, and then of course, you know, uh, subject matter. Um, some of us worked together, like doing, uh, you know, large, large murals uh, on buildings and stuff like that, and street art. Um, some of us were more dedicated to, uh, like, studio art. Um, but we basically just had our, as our own personal gallery for the four of us to produce and display our own work. Yeah. Um, which was nice, but it was also, you know, like a working gallery too. So we had like this collaborative um, aspect where we could be working at the same time as our buddies and be able to see what they're doing and like learn from them and trade tips and tricks and techniques so it was a cool um cool experience what happened i, I definitely felt a lot of uh technical growth while i worked there okay. um just because it was just so easy to look over and be like hey how, how do you do that you know uh -huh. and be able to apply that to something i'm working on so not only a gallery but it was also like a working space for all of you yeah, yeah. Okay. So it was a, that was another kind of like a, a little bit of a draw because like people would come in, you know, walk around, and there would usually be at least one of us, if not all four of us, working on something at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they could uh, observe us uh, creating. Okay. It, it, so you said it lasted for like five. The reason I'm asking is because I've had a space, I had a very similar idea, and I've had a space for three years now that I can't get into because a building started being constructed next door, like a restaurant started gutting out the entire area. And basically yeah. I got into the place. It's an old 1930s train car, the entire oh, thing. Cool. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> and so I was excited to do that. I wanted to do a very similar thing. Uh, mm -hmm. We got in there and plus I also collect and sell um, uh, vintage toys and games and books. And oh, stuff. nice. Awesome. That's another 
a like, side passion of mine. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was going to do all this stuff in there. And then I was in there for like a month. And one day they came in and they're like, hey, we're digging a basement and it's starting to collapse and we're afraid this train is going to fall in. Oh, <laughs> so I had to get out of there. And then it just they're like, it's going to be three months. And then three months later, it's going to be three months. And then blah, blah, oh, blah. Yeah. Next yeah. thing you know, my three cool. release is up. And I, oh, yeah, and COVID happened too. But like right. this was this was two and a half years ago that they told me that they were digging. And then COVID <sighs> happened. I oh, never man. got to get into the place. And now I'm going, ugh, since I had to move online with everything anyway, I'm kind of like, right. do I even pursue it anymore? But listening to you talk about this, it's like, yes, but I still want to do that. I want to build a working space. And yeah, if people I mean, come in, like, even while you're working, just be open. Um, I mean, I'm certain, like, even if, you know, if those guys that um, have their different things to pursue or, you know, like, say, like, two of them moved, one of them literally moved all the way across the country to Portland um, eventually. Another yeah. guy moved uh, to the coast. Um, and uh, the, another guy moved, you know, about a couple hours away. But um, had that not happened, I think we might still be open today or, you know, you know, it might be interesting to see how um, the place would have evolved too, and what it could have come into. Yeah. So you're saying it was just because somebody moved or people were moving that you closed it. It wasn't just like, all right, this is getting way too expensive. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, like, it was, um, it would have been too much to, uh, financial strain to try and for one, one artist to try and manage considering the space and the rent that we had to pay. It was easy to break that up into, you know, four different ways each month. Right. Um, but, um, like say if I was doing it by myself, I would just been like a, a hobby because I can, the town's pretty small. I don't like it's so much traffic that's based on tourist traffic, really. Yeah. The, the retail area here, and it wouldn't just been like, you know, breaking even each month, I suspect. Okay. Um, but, you know, it was, um, it was, a, it was, a, it was a fun experiment. <laughs> right. And, um, you know, I don't have anything uh, negative to say about it. Well, good. I wasn't looking for that for sure. I mean, of course, hmm. I want to hear positive. No, of course not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, yeah, everything. Everything came up Craig, so to speak. <laughs> it <laughs> was beautiful that. and we all became millionaires is basically, mm -hmm. yeah, there you go. Um, sure. <laughs> so I, I do want to, so I, I want to ask you about, we, we don't need to talk about uh, opening spaces all day. I would like to know more about what you create. And first of all, how would you describe what you do? Because I know you do illustration and you make robots and I want to cover all these grounds and you've also illustrated books, but what would you, how would you first uh, describe the style that you do? Um, uh, as an umbrella term, I usually, uh, class myself as like a sci-fi artist because okay. that can really, that can really encompass a lot of things, which is kind of what I do. Yeah. Um, you know, it's mostly, uh, a lot of my subject matter tends to focus around, uh, robots or androids or, um, cyborgs, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm a science fiction illustrator. <laughs> I okay. would say, um, or painter and toy maker at this point, really. That's what the past years uh, led me into um, more so than anything else. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess I've been painting and drawing for seriously for about the past t uh, 10 or 12 years or so. Um, uh -huh. I majored in, you know, I always took our classes, communications classes through high school, uh, majored in graphic design and sociology in college, but um, I was more in the, and then worked professionally for a long time, long, long time as a graphic designer, but never really um, applied myself to uh, traditional medium, you know, with like, you know, painting or drawing or mm -hmm. inks, you know, um, until I'd say, like I said, about 10 or 12 years ago is when I kind of jumped into it. Um, so like, this is something I need to add to my... <laughs> add to my resume. So, um, yeah, I just started working at it and then, you know, slowly kind of found my way into like, um, like I didn't really start out as a sci-fi, uh, painter. Like that wasn't my goal. It's just like, all right, let's put some paint on the canvas and figure out what's going on and how to like, you know, work it and, you know, kind of taught myself how to draw again, taught myself how to paint, um, and kind of moved through it from there. And then as like, I've started creating more, work on a regular basis, I found that um, I started to create like a, a cohesive uh, portfolio, so to speak, like, all right, this is my theme, this is my thing that I do, that people were re recognized before, and it just kind of happened to fall into this robotics, or robots and uh, science fiction mm -hmm. um, uh, themes, um, which is 
something that you know I I I, I that's the kind of artwork that I gravitate to. It's the kind of artwork I buy, and that's what I guess I um, <laughs> mimic, for lack of a better word, is like you know like I'm a huge like uh, let's say like Frank Frazetta or um, uh, Angus Mickey or uh, you know Clive Caldwell. All these guys from like the seventies uh, and eighties are uh, people that I grew up on, and I um, I draw inspiration from their their work. I can't really say mimic them because I'm not quite <laughs> anywhere near their skill level. I mean, these guys, you know, are classic, you know, oil painters. Yeah. Um, where I'm, you know, tend to stick when I'm working with that is like, you know, uh, loose acrylics and, uh, you know, ink and watercolor stuff. How did you discover the artists that inspired this? Like, how did you um, come about them? Do you remember? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, so like, uh, I threw Clive Caldwell out there. Um, so I was big into uh, Dungeons and Dragons and uh, Magic the Gathering. Mm -hmm. um, those games, which are when I was in uh, middle school and high school, and those games are chock full of artwork. Yeah, you know, um, you can't, uh, especially match together. And that's that's how how <laughs> that's the soul of the game to a degree. Um, so following these artists and um, just being inspired by them is, or I mean, that's how I got inspired by them. Is just like falling into that that world of uh, the fantasy and science fiction there, and of course, you know, there's like you know, um, I wasn't a huge comics books guy, but you know, I appreciate them. Mm. But uh, there's so many other um, illustrated, like book covers, for instance. Yeah. That like oh, that, you know, like the Conan novels, like that's all for Zeta. Oh, at right. least the old ones were. Um, so and like um, Angus Mickey. He did like some of the big uh, like epic sci-fi things with airbrushes um, of like giant spaceships and things like that. He, I think he might have been. Uh, I, I think he was a concept artist on like 70 sci-fi movies. Um, I can't. I'm not certain of that, but somebody else can look that up. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I I agree with you on the Dungeons and Dragons things. Like I used to get the books. I, mm -hmm. I never knew anything about Dungeons and Dragons. I would just pick them up because of the artwork and, and like I would open them and look at the artwork and that was the extent of it. I never read it. I, right. <laughs> I never yeah, understood yeah, yeah. how the game was played. <laughs> I would just be like, oh, that artwork's so cool. And I would just right. look at it like a, a, like an art book. And sure. Yeah. And that's, that's, uh, so I'm, I'm very familiar with that. And then, uh, along with airbrushing, I remember when I, when I would see artwork that was airbrushed, I'd be like, oh, that's how they did that. And I'm yeah. like, I don't know what airbrushing is. What do I mean? That's how they did that. It's like, right. you know, it's like an entire <laughs> skill. I'm like, all you do is you get an airbrush and all of a sudden your artwork looks like this. Right. <laughs> so have you ever done any airbrushing at all? Um, I have not as, um, I use it for painting, <laughs> Uh, these toys and models that I make. Yeah. Um, sometimes, but I haven't really done it. I used it for too much. I can't think of a piece that I've done solely uh, with an airbrush. I've maybe maybe used one to embellish some pieces mm -hmm. um, to get like you know like a, a shading or a spattering effect or something like that. But um, you know, I've never really sat down and did a, a complete airbrush okay. piece. Yeah. No. But yeah. I... No. It's it's a neat a neat technique and. Um, <laughs> like anything it's there's a learning curve you know <laughs> yeah yeah no i got as far as buying one and then trying to figure out how to hook it up and i think i sprayed it once and that was about the extent of it i'm like well that took half my day i'll do this later <laughs> and i never i never did it sat in my right. basement for a while um and, and the other thing that's that i found interesting too and i only just found out that this is actually a thing back when i used to work at i used to do uh websites for a advertising agency Sure. And we had a bunch of graphic designers, brilliant graphic designers. And one time they needed something where they're like, oh, we need a we need a pencil drawing of a small boy. And everybody was like, well, how are we going to do that? And I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean? How are we going to do that? And I'm like, you, you draw it. And, and I ended up drawing it. But it, it was at that point that I realized a lot of the graphic designers, they can make these amazing things, put it together, create shapes and stuff right. like that. But they don't know how to actually draw. And I. I found that so surprising and actually it's not that uncommon. So not saying that you didn't know how to draw, but you were saying you had to get back into the habit of doing it because you were doing graphic design, but oh, it, it yeah, was interesting. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think that's actually like a, some, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, 
that statement that designers can't draw has been a, around as long since really? as long as there's been you know, graphic designers. Yeah, <laughs> I found that so surprising. I just assumed because I saw the I would see the stuff they would create, and I'm like, of course they can draw. You know, it's it's because it's this amazing stuff, and also they do it on the computer in a way that. I had, couldn't even comprehend yet, but I could draw the little boy that they were asking for, you know? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, um, you know, it's just another way of looking at something uh, creatively, I guess, um, and how to put those parts together in your brain. Yeah. Um, I mean, it would be different from, and even when it comes down to materials, you know, like like oil paint is so much more different than um, acrylic paint. You think you've used one, you'd use the other, but... It's the tools, you know, they all have their own, their own, um, you're right. Methodologies. Yeah. Yeah. The same way with uh, many discussions I have with people is I, I don't know if I'll ever understand how to do watercolor. You know, it's, right. yeah. <laughs> I always just end up making a big mess. <laughs> Everything turns brown and gray. <laughs> exactly. And the, in the paper just uh, first, and I'm sure this is part of it, uh, and it's supposed to do this, but I just always feel weird. It's like, is the paper supposed to be that bumpy now? Um, right. like, did I do something <laughs> wrong? But that's just me. Um, now you went back into uh, painting and stuff like that, and then you ended up making robots. And also, I like that you said you know you just uh, you started making robots. It made me think of how growing up, everybody I knew in high school, they'd sit down and you know you just you you put pen to paper and you're doodling, say you're on the phone or something. And all of me and my friends, we seem to just draw an eye. Like, yeah. we would, and that made me think of that. And I'm like, and instead you, you, you started, you would just draw like a robot or a robot eye. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but that anyway, my stand in. Yeah. It was, so that was the thought that popped into my head. But anyway, um, what I uh, was getting at is, so you started painting and then you created robots and then how did, um, and when you were painting, you started making uh, these, uh, I guess, toys or sculptures, I guess. How did you get into the actual making these? uh physical well phys yeah physical robots yeah um i don't know when the for the idea first came to me i mean like what do they call designer toys or art toys are not a new thing you know like right. um, that's something a lot of uh artists just strictly make their career on period it's just doing that and i've always thought that was a fascinating thing um <laughs> part of me though is always thinking of like merchandising yeah um so, uh, you know, I, I make these cute little robots, and then I was like, oh, that could easily translate to um, a toy, right? Um, it can, but then I was like, oh, you know, the, the tools that I have available for me can't really make, like, a, a toy toy, you know, for a kid. It just won't stand up to the abuse of being played with. But right. I could make an art toy, right? Something that somebody's going to look at and appreciate and sit on their shelf and collect. Um, so... I got into it, I think, 2017. I did a Kickstarter where I created a um, a six-inch tall action figure. Um, oh, six-inch. Wow. Okay. Yeah, kind of based on my um, uh, uh, illustrations of robots. Um, and, yeah, that was funded through Kickstarter. And that was, um, that was an experience because I wasn't really prepared to with all what all that took it's like okay all right i got the money now like okay now how do i get this thing actually produced and then get it fulfilled and that kind of thing what was the um, final goal by the way the I can't, it wasn't a great deal i think i might have had like five thousand dollars total or something like okay that. but you know it was enough to get this thing um made properly and um uh distributed properly yeah i was gonna say when you when you say made you're saying mass produced mm -hmm. okay right and um, not mass mass produced. You know, I had a a, uh, a resin artist out in Southern California um, uh, mold and cast all these for me. I developed the uh, the prototype using um, 3D uh, modeling software and got a pr print out for him and sent him like you know the prototype parts which he used to mold and then he casted uh, all the toys for me. Okay. And you, so you did do it through resin. Uh, I wasn't sure if you were doing 3d printing or resin, right. or, I guess well, 3d printing would take way longer, wouldn't it? Well, so now, um, I, all the, the, the toys I create now I have what's, <clears throat> so I'm going to back up a little bit. Yeah, no problem. Um, <laughs> Tell me all summer, about it. <laughs> sure. Last summer about this time I, um, acquired a 3d resin printer for, oh. and I was like, all right, well, let me see what I can do with this. The cost to entry was pretty low, so 
Really? I thought, well, this is something I could, because ever since I did that 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 run with my first Kickstarter robot, I was like, man, I wish I could do this myself in a more efficient manner. Um, you know, <laughs> control the means of production, so to speak. So um, after that, I had ended up getting like your standard uh, 3D fil- filament printer and tried making some robots. Um, and it worked okay, but it just wasn't very fast and just wasn't very efficient. And the robots at the end of the day also were just not pretty fragile uh, okay. for what I was trying to do with them, which was make, you know, some like maybe three or four inch opposable, like limited opposability uh, toys there. So I put, you know, that didn't, I played with that for a while and didn't really work out. So a couple years later, um, I ended up getting this 3D resin printer and then I, started uh, printing out some prototypes for myself to see how it worked. And then the idea came to me. I was like, okay, what about a Robot of the Month Club, right? Yes. Yeah. So it would be a subscription box where, well, not really a box, but <laughs> you get a new robot designed by me in the mail each month. Um, and I just kind of threw it out there. You know, I built a website around that idea, mm-hmm. um, printed out, you know, a stack of models. And I was like, all right, well, I'll just throw it out there in the world and see what happens, you know, see if I get any subscribers. And it just kind of took off and it just keeps and seems to keep growing each month. So, which is a good day and a bad thing because, um, like, I haven't really set, aside from, like, sketching ideas for the robot coming up next month, yeah. you know, I haven't been able to really paint or draw anything seriously just because my time is all focused on, making the new robot each month and getting oh. that fulfilled. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's been fun though. I, I enjoy it. It's just, um, it's definitely a, um, a creative drive. Like I used to tell other people when they asked me about like, how, how do you create so much artwork? Like speaking of like the paintings and drawings mm-hmm. and usually the way to, for me to do that for myself was to either like book a show or book a festival or something mm-hmm. like that. Knowing that like I have, basically like a deadline and a goal that has to get fulfilled. Um, Cause otherwise, like I think I just, I would think a lot about doing the art, but not so much about actually <laughs> not actually doing it. Right. Um, but having like, you know, uh, something that needs to be, get a goal that needs to get met. Um, you know, that that's the drive that, you know, requires me to like, okay, I got to do this. You know, I've already signed up for it, you know, so I've got to, get this thing done. So <laughs> I was always interested in kind of like 3D modeling and um, again, it was something like I would think about doing but never really got into until like I started making these robots. Now I do it <laughs> every day almost. <laughs> so like, yeah. which is a good thing, you know, like my skills have like um, jumped exponentially through this forced training camp <laughs> right? Um, and uh, 3D modeling software um, and also, you know, the rigors and trials and tribulations of 3D printing in general, but um, yeah, so I'm glad I uh, started this this uh, subscription uh-huh. service for people. I know it's kind of all over the place there, but yeah, no, feel free I to have a few, with any questions. I have a, no, I was just going to say, I have a few questions on that. So first of all, yeah, you so you decided to do this Kickstarter, which first of all, when you did that, I mean, that's one of those things where it's like, it's it's hard to get going. It's hard to go like, is anybody even going to like, how, how did you even promote your Kickstarter and, and, you know, promote yourself in general? Um, thinking back on it, I think, you know, I had a small social media following, like okay. a very modest one, um, on like through Facebook and Instagram, which is my primary channels of, um, uh, getting the word out there. And of course I think I probably bought some paid advertising through Facebook as well. Okay. Um, I had a, through the gallery we had accumulated, a a decent sized like uh, emailing list too, you mm. know, so that was a way to market and keep people updated there. Um, so yeah, I mean, most of it was all primarily digital marketing. Um, there was any time like during the time period between like launch or, or no, leading up to the launch of the actual Kickstarter, there was like a couple festivals and then like a Comic Con that I went to okay. where I was promoting it all the time too. There, like you know, there was a poster up there, like or like here, sign up. You could sign up now to learn more about this um, when it gets launched, that kind of thing. And now, yeah. I know today there's actually a lot of um, I don't know what how you describe these companies or services. I found out, but they will basically 
piggyback onto your Kickstarter and um, basically spend do all the legwork and promoting for you. Oh. For in exchange for a kickback from your um, Kickstarter. So basically, okay. the better, better your Kickstarter or whatever crowdfunding thing does, the more they get paid, right? Kind of a joint so, venture sort of thing. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, they're uh, <laughs> investing their time into your 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 product. Gotcha. Um, well, that's it's handy. something. Yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, I, I was talking to a guy about this one of those services about six months ago. At the time, I didn't have any Kickstarters planned, but it's good to know those kinds of uh, kinds of options are out there now. Yeah, and if, <clears throat> if there's anything I've ever heard about Kickstarter is that uh, once you start, you don't realize how much putting into just running it there is as opposed to getting the finished product or even when you're done it's like oh now i have all this stuff to fulfill you know <laughs> right yeah yeah i mean yeah to make it happen you definitely i mean especially when you're own, oh, it's kind of becomes all consuming just the promotion of it right right it's like uh you know um you're campaigning for office, right? <laughs> Something right. to that effect. <laughs> you know, you're trying to get elected with dollars. <laughs> Which is another thing that was fun when I was searching your name beforehand um, on Google. Apparently, there's a mayor of some town uh, somewhere that I'll say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. it's funny. On Facebook, sometimes my uh, my art page will get tagged with him in it by mistake. That's um, hilarious. I don't want to bother to change it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, fun. No, I wouldn't either. Um, and, and then the other thing too is, uh, so you were painting and doing all this and then you, I mean, were you messing with 3D? Because you're like, I'm going to make a robot now or I'm going to make an action figure. And did you already know how to use the 3D software or at least have a general idea of how it worked? Did you go, that's going to be part of what I'm learning to do this, setting the sure. deadline, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah, sometimes like I... Um... <laughs> have a goal but don't really necessarily like um plan out all the steps to get there yeah. i just crash my way through until i figure it out <laughs> i hear um, that <laughs> so um i think so like when the, the the idea came to me to um do this i started poking around i i messed around with some 3d um modeling programs throughout you know uh college high school and in between um but never really sat down to seriously uh, create anything with one. Yeah. Um, so then the idea came to me. It's like, all right, I want to do this, but like, what is the most, um, the easiest to learn and use and cheapest form of software I could do that with? There is a so browser-based program called uh, Tinkercad, oh. um, which is free. Um, it's actually made by, I think it's from Autodesk. Autodesk makes like serious like 3D engineering yeah. programs. Um, but it's a uh, very rudimentary. You basically just got like basic shapes, but it's enough to get you going and use like the tools that are in TinkerCAD pretty much translate around to any other 3D program too. Yeah. In terms of like how to move the camera and move parts and stuff around like that. But you can make a lot of really cool stuff in there if you're willing to put the time into it. Um, using more advanced programs, you can do the same manipulations faster and easier. Um, just because you have more tools available to you. Mm -hmm. But Tinkercad, yeah, really allowed me to uh, just kind of get in there and uh, build a foundation in the 3D um, uh, modeling uh, software that with uh, no no barrier to entry. You know, like I said, it's free. All you got to do is sign up, and then you can make as many models as you want, and you can download them and print them out. I didn't know that it was browser based. I've heard of it, but yeah. I've never tried it. That's interesting. Yeah, you don't even have to download any software. That's amazing. I had no idea. It's <laughs> wow. And so, did you just go in and start tooling around and then look up YouTube videos, or did you study first and then get into um, it? I, I guess it was kind of a combination. Like, I, you know, work to a point and be like, okay, like, how do I do X, whatever it is I need to do now? And then, like, see if it was even possible in Tinkercad. Yeah. And then, if it was, you know, follow some tutorial to uh, implement that. Okay. Which is something I still do today, only with this different software. Like, I'll go to a point and be like, oh, all right, I'm stuck, but I know it's possible. So it's mm -hmm. in, like, all right, you know, look up how to boot in this particular shape, that kind of thing. You know? Right. And then there, well, there we go. So, yeah. And that's the thing. I've, I've dabbled with some uh, 3D software, and mainly I use, uh, I use, I've been using Blender to do 2D animation, like, because I haven't even gone into the 3D part. But it's, 
it's to the point where they're so complex that you, normally in a program you would just right click and you'd be like, there's the menu or the thing I'm looking right, for. Right, 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 right. In 3D software, it's like, nope, there's like 20 different areas where it could very yeah. possibly be. And none of right. them are the same. <laughs> yeah. It might not do, might not apply to like the particular uh, angle you're working at right now either. Yep. You know? Like, yeah, you can, this tool is available, but you can't use it here. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I know what you're saying. I use uh, I use like ZBrush primarily, okay. which I'm kind of kicking myself for because like I got uh, Blender, I believe, can do just about anything from what I understand. Mm -hmm. Um, and what because I've been dabbling in that too recently, but um, I learned ZBrush and you know, but that's you know, cost money every year. Right. Uh, whereas Blender is free. <laughs> and, yeah. Um, so it's again, it's like all right. <sighs> It comes down to time and like, all right, do I need to should I take the time to sit down and learn Blender or just, you know, keep going where I'm going with the software I know how to use. Right. Yeah. And it, that really is it. It's like you, you do that. You know that it's in the long run going to be better. But at the same time, it's like, but I still have the stuff I need to finish. Right, and right I, you now. Know, this, yeah. <laughs> this is going to take me like three months to get used to using it or something like that. Right. You know, whatever. But but that also goes to uh, the other thing I wanted to ask was as you, you built this Robot of the Month Club and it started taking off, mm -hmm. how do you scale for that? The, the more people you get, the more popular it gets. How are you? You've got the printer. Like, how fast does it go? How do you even do you just have the thing running constantly? Like how do you, how do you scale for, for people signing up for it? Um, well, I mean, it's a good question. It's a question I've been asking myself honestly for about the past three months. <laughs> um, and I've talked to some, uh, some consultants, let's say, um, have given me some strong advice on how to, uh, to, uh, start doing that. But basically, and I'll try and share some of that right now. And yeah. it's, um, really, you know, I need to start looking for, who else can help me, right? Okay. And then what do I need to basically pay them, right? Okay, like where can I take this, uh, the production uh, to a level? So like, you know, I could hire employees, like I can hire somebody to um, pack all these robots and ship them or like somebody to manage just strictly focus on my advertising and social media mm -hmm. or, you know, because there's a lot of this that like, <clears throat> I don't want to do like I don't want to pack you know a hundred robots every month. That's tedious. Takes a lot of time. Um, yep. Or like I don't want to sit back and think about like you know a clever TikTok video. You know I mean like I like the idea of it, but I can't. I don't have the time to invest in it to make it the best it can be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. So product, the production of the actual models doesn't take a lot of time or um to get what I need, but like if I was to grow my current subscription base at least 10 times or even 50 times, that's where I need to be to take it to the, to scale to the next level. Really. Right. Um, cause right now it's just kind of feeding on itself to a degree. Um, it's a, and, you know, it's fun, you know, it expands my brand. People get a kick out of them. Um, but it's not, like I said, it's right on the cusp of, um, it needs to either just, be a little hobby or I need to commit in like the advertising to grow this um, to where, you know, I can get some help basically find the right people to do the, the jobs for me that I don't want to do, but find somebody that loves to pack boxes, you know? Oh, yeah, I know. And that, that's the thing. After we're done here, I have like 20 things to pack up and I know that's going to take, I know I already know how long that's going to take. And uh, right. instead I could be, you know, doubling up on stuff. And that's one of the reasons why I collect the, well, I collect the toys in the books and all that because I love collecting them, but I can't justify owning all of them, but I keep, right. I, I love the, I love the hunt and I yeah, love looking so at I. them for a while, you know, but <laughs> yeah, after yeah. a while it's like, okay, I haven't, I have things that I won't sell that I've had for years and I forgot I had until I started doing this, but I still won't right. sell them. So I, I go out and buy stuff that I only have a little bit of a connection with and sure. then I sell those and then I can buy more. And right. also I did it because another thing is what I do is all print on demand or music on demand. Like all my stuff is, I, I've never had to ship anything. I've never had to figure out how to ship something fragile or the best mm. way or the best prices. So that was another experiment. So if I ever created a physical product, I could go, this is how you do it. But right. what I've learned is with that scaling of it, it also involves just so much packing, but I can't justify 
this is, and tell me if this is where you're at. There's the, you said it's kind of self-sustaining right now. And it's like, you know, you're looking at other options, but you need to make this much more to do it. But do you also have the argument in your head where it's, but if I do that, I'll be able to make more to get to that next point because I won't be spending all the time shipping. Like there's the weird catch 22 where it's like, if I actually (laughs) dive into that and get more people to fulfill these orders, then I can focus more and find more people. Like, are you to that point? And that's the part where I can't answer that question to myself. Um, I mean, I think I haven't really asked myself that question, but that seems like where a logical thought process where my mind would go and be like, okay, well, all right. I don't have to worry about packing these now. But I think I then I would just spend that time like, okay, how else can we grow this business? Like, all right, what mm-hmm. are the kind of variations and models can we put out? What are the kind of programs can we put out? Can we make the subscription an actual box? Like, can we put more things in there? You know, can we up the price point on that? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, there's tons of things where <laughs> my mind would definitely have its, uh, or my thoughts would be better used instead of like doing the, uh, the logistics and fulfillment and, you know, management of accounts and that kind of stuff. Um, for sure. Yeah. And well, the other thing too, is on top of that, there's the other catch where you found something that you can do and something you like doing, you started it because you wanted to try this and create it. And now it's taking a lot of time because it's making money, but you also like painting and drawing. Right. You know, so how has, like, are you still able to put your artwork out there and are you still putting it out there? Are you finding places or galleries or things to put your, uh, your paintings and drawings and, and prints? To be honest, uh, no, because I just haven't had time to pursue that. I, um, I, uh, yeah, I literally have spent all my time practically in, uh, well, not all my time, but all my creative time. Right in um 3d modeling software but that's know. the dream i mean that's what sure. that's what you work up to but i i get i get the i can see that you're going like yeah but i can't do any of the painting and it's like but right. you're still creating you, you know yeah well what's also too is like once i got into this is that like i've always considered myself like i don't know like i've always wished my skills were stronger in painting and drawing, let's say. Okay. And I mean, I think maybe as even as I, if I were pursuing that on a more regular basis, and I, I'm, I, you know, let's say I got myself to like a, um, for lack of a better uh, example, a presented level of um, skill in drawing the human figure. Yeah. I think even once I got there, I would still have that feeling of being like, all right, we're going to be better, <clears throat> you know? Yeah. Um, but one thing I felt that once I started getting into this, um, the 3D modeling software, is that I feel like I have more of a knack for that hmm. um, than I do for painting and drawing. It's just like it just like makes sense to me to see things in every angle at the same time, whatever I want to, mm-hmm. um, to be able to spin, spin something around and go inside it and outside of it and around it, um, and it just. Uh, it's once I got like the, the groundwork. Um, the modeling and sculpting just kind of, it all kind of came together for me pretty easily. Yeah. Um, now not to say like, I still don't have got like tons to learn in terms of like, um, uh, just, you know, basic sculpting techniques or, um, how to be efficient, more efficient in the program. But that could also just be a feeling just because it's something, um, brand new too, you know, like right. brains, right. New wrinkles in it, <laughs> like since it's learning and stuff. <laughs> yeah. So it could just be a, a residual feeling of feeling from that. Um, and not to say that I'm not going to paint or draw ever again. Right. Um, but right now this is what's, uh, occupying my, my attention. And that's <clears> not a bad thing. No, 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 I don't think so. No, especially once I can make these, I think that to a degree, I've always wanted to make these 3d manifestations of my artwork anyways. And this is, a. Uh, how it's finally come together. <laughs> well, and it really is because I've seen uh, the paintings and the drawings that you've done from your Instagram page and your website. And up until you started making those models, that's really like a lot of the stuff is really from your artwork. It really is 3D manifestations right. of your artwork. And and I think that's fantastic. You, you didn't just go, okay, this these robots will be cool. You know, it, yeah. you, you really <laughs> took the style that you have and, and created a 3D model of it. 
That's right, guys. Stay on brand. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and do they move at all? By the way, I get, I never asked that. So these ones are no. These are all static. I've um, again. This is something else like that. I would like to pursue, to pursue too. Is um, what I mentioned earlier. Like if I had more time, mm -hmm. like okay, how can we make these things better? Can we make them opposable? Can we make them like um, separate mo model kits? Right. Like so yeah. they got separate pieces and people buy them and put them together uh, on their own. Um, but yeah, as of right now, these, all the ones I'm selling now are, uh, static, um, okay. figurines. Um, the, the first, uh, robot I did for the Kickstarter, that one was a possible head. It's like, uh, oh. I think it had like six or eight points of articulation, but, um, yeah, th these guys are, like I said, the new guys are, since they're so small, um, they're about 70, 75 millimeters tall usually. Mm -hmm. um, trying to work into a particular kind of uh, articulation, at least with the ones. So, from my experience, with the more articulation you add, with what I'm trying to do, at least the less detail I can kind of work with. So right now, like I can kind of um, sculpt whatever I want, right? Yeah. Um, but like, if you pick up, like, say a Star Wars action figure from like, like you know 1979, right? He's got like the four pieces of articulation, and he's also a very simple um, sculpt. But that's also based on the, how it was mass produced, right? All those pieces were right. injected, molded, and those got to be. If you're doing injection molding, there's limitations on to what you can sculpt. Um, and I'm I got to preface this by saying I've got a very limited knowledge of that that um, manufacturing process. But that's how I've uh, interpreted it so far. Right. So. But it's, no, we've <clears throat> we've all had the toys and torn them apart, and then sure. kind of in our mind go, "Well, that's how they did it." You know. Right. <laughs> There's even the ones where they would have the turning torso, and there'd be some weird bungee cord inside where you yeah, could yeah, try yeah, and the, pull the it apart. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and I mean, I don't think I would ever go that far with anything articulation, at least not yet. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, I definitely would like to, you know, have like some simple, like, you know, at least like four points articulation where the arms and legs could move and the head yeah. could turn, that kind of thing. And the other thing too, you were talking about that they're much smaller and the detail in them. And it reminded me of the, um, like those, those old, uh, those PVC Smurf figurines that you used to be able to get. Mm -hmm. And it, I guess I wanted to ask like, why wh I, I've talked to a couple of other people that are, are doing the, uh, toy models and things like that and creating sure. them on their own and doing resin or uh, why does nobody work in PVC anymore? I, I assume it's probably because it's expensive as all get out, but that's something that like, I'm not familiar with. Like, you know, so like I 3d print all my stuff, whereas, yeah. you know, I'm sure a lot of the guys you talked about, like actually do the, the, the resin casting, the molding. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I don't know. Like it's cause that was like the standard I, for so long is the PVC. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just wondering if that's um, well. Now let's see. There's also like uh, a lot of these guys do our toys do vinyl, right? Yeah, vinyl that's true. Figurines. Um, like maybe that's just what, another word for it. <laughs> I mean, it could be. I mean, yeah, maybe PVC is a uh, what's the V in PVC stand for? Maybe I don't know. Oh yeah, no, I know. I I never thought of that. I'm not, I don't. I don't have any idea what PVC stands for altogether. So, huh? That's a good we'll point. See. Maybe it's vinyl. <laughs> Polyvinyl carbonate. I don't know. I'm just making things up. Oh no, my God! You probably. Are... I was close. Polyvinyl chloride. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow, that's impressive, though. But okay, so that makes sense. Okay, that actually answers the question for me because there are people who make it in vinyl, and you're right. And vinyl right. sounds more hip and now, and right. the kids, you know, <laughs> with their retro. <laughs> right. The disc players. <laughs> um, their Walkmans. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean. Materials aside, it's um, an interesting community to be a part of. I'm sure I've yeah. realized as I've been marketing myself, I've got to know um, a fair amount of uh, sculptors and other artists and also just fans who will promote your stuff for, you know, free. It's just like, hey, you got a toy? We love, you know, you know, because these bloggers and uh, um, uh, influencers, for lack of a better term, okay. again, will, you know, they're looking for content. So, like, if you got a new toy... That just reach out to them and they'll certainly like uh, promote your stuff. Okay. And when do you? When did you go from 
the people who just reach out and go, Hey, I love your stuff that I never looked at. Uh, follow me and I'll get you 5,000 subscribers. Like th- that's the point where I'm at. Like I'm not, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No. <laughs> I'm not at the point where I have the actual people talking to me yet. <laughs> no. So like I, um, you know, I've like people don't reach out to me. I reach out to them. And oh, that's okay. also kind of, kind of a, uh, a policy too. If somebody's reaching out to you, I rarely <laughs> always look at a suspect, you know, right. <laughs> look over. Um, but, uh, no, I mean, for what I've been doing, I, um, you know, just started following people on Instagram and then, uh, some of these guys are pretty, I think toy artist UK or, or toy artist.net is their website. Okay. They've got basically like a, um, a, uh, how to guide, like, okay, you're a toy artist and you want to promote your stuff. Follow these five steps. And here's a link, a list of, uh, other bloggers that you should reach out to. I like that. Email them. Yeah. Damn it. So, I search for stuff like that all the time. Damn. Okay. So, so I mean, like, I guess kind of, again, like it's a, it's a small niche artistic community, uh, I guess, small leash, uh, you know, compared to, compared to other forms of art. Yeah. But it also brings in a lot of um, different uh, types of collectors too, right? Mm-hmm. Because there's just, you know, the toy collector in general is a, um, I'm gonna say I'm trying to find an artful word for it. Not fanatical, but they will do a lot to get to complete their collection, right? Yeah. <laughs> and um, that's a good thing for me and other guys that are uh, doing this kind of thing. No, I um, love because... that sense of community of that guy putting that on his website and going, "Here, everybody, join in." That's right. That's really cool. Yeah. So there's um, and also like through Instagram or other social media forms like that too, the collectors do a lot for. Um, promotion as well because they love taking toys pictures of the collections or what um they love taking pictures of what they've done to the, the model they, that you bought because like a lot of people that collect my stuff um so i sell blank versions as well as painted versions mm-hmm. they will take you know take the uh, painted version and you know make their own custom paint job and they want to show that off right and then I, in turn i show off what they did to my artwork or my uh my model yeah. so it's all uh so give and take, but all, um, you know, and, and all ships rise kind of a community, right? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and I, I didn't even think about the fact that, yeah, some of your stuff is painted. Like how long does that, are you doing that individually? Do you have like a process that you do that with? So, I mean, the, I've got a process of like a bag of tricks that makes, doesn't take a lot of time, but okay. you know, it allows me to print a lot of models or I'm sorry, paint a lot of models um, efficiently, okay. but also make them look really nice and um, detailed at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Cause I've, I, I mean, I've seen the stuff that's painted that you have and it looks great. So I, I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you dig it. <laughs> yeah, no, I really do. And um, also just uh, one more thing. If, uh, I mean, where would, uh, where would you like people to go to see your work or contact you or become a member of this robot of the month club. <laughs> if you'd like to sign up for the robot of the month club, head on over to snodgrassart.com. That's S N O D G R A S S A R T.com. Or you could follow me on Instagram at uh, snodgrass art or on Facebook at slash Craig snodgrass art. And I think that's all my important, uh, digital details there (laughs) yeah no and your site is very thorough so if they want to get an idea definitely your website is a good place to start and it's connected to all that other stuff out there stay tuned like i said there's a new robot every month and aside from just the robot of the month club you know i also have a whole suite of other robots available um for individual purpose or a purchase should you not want to you know or individual purpose (laughs) <laughs> right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they all have their own, their own uh, prime directive. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. I was really glad that I got the chance to meet you. Yeah, man. It was nice to meet you too. Mm-hmm.